In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. I'm going to show you this sensor on three platforms. The Arduino, the Raspberry Pi with Raspbian, and the Raspberry Pi with Windows 10 IoT Core. Let's start by downloading the software from GitHub. I have the project open in my web browser and I've scrolled down to the bottom of the page. And here's a link to download all of the source code in a zip file. I'm going to go ahead and click that and get the source code. The file completed download and it's now in my downloads folder. I'm going to go ahead and open that folder up. We'll right click it, drag it out to the desktop and have it extract right there. I'm going to rename the folder to just DHT so that it's easy to find. And there we go. Now we have all our files on the desktop. Okay, we're ready to get started. The first platform that I want to take a look at is Raspbian using the Raspberry Pi 2. The first step is to copy the source code over to the Raspberry Pi. To do this, we're going to use a utility called WinSCP. I'll start the utility up. Now I'll connect to my Raspberry Pi using the IP address and the username and password that I use when I connect with the shell. I just reflashed the SD card on my Raspberry Pi, so I need to update the certificate here. Okay, we'll just wait for it to connect here. Okay, now we're connected. And there you can see we have a nice file system that we can copy to. We're going to open up the DHT folder. We're going to grab our source code, and we're just going to drop it over here on the Raspberry Pi. And that was quick. Our file is copied over, and we're ready to get started. Let me just close everything up here. We'll disconnect from the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll get started. Now, I'll switch over to the Raspberry Pi. Let's give it a second here to boot up. I'll enter my login credentials here. And now we're in, and we're ready for the first step. The source code requires the wiring Pi library. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to clone that, and then we'll get it compiled and installed. Okay, the cloning step is done. Now we just need to change into the directory here, wiring pi, and then we're going to build that, and it will install during the build. The build is now complete, and Wiring Pi is installed. The next step is to compile our source code. Here's a listing of the files. You can see our source codes right here. I'll enter the complete command here to compile the source code. You can find this in the project page on Hackster. Okay, we're compiled now. A file listing here shows the binary created. For this application to work, we need to use the sudo command. 
Let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. We'll start out taking samples every 1,000 milliseconds, or one second, and we'll take 10 samples. Of course, it helps if I type the command incorrectly. So on that first run, and with those parameters, we were able to read the sensor 80% of the time. I'm going to run it again, this time a little faster. That time, we were able to read the sensor 70% of the time. And now, even faster. And now that time, we were able to read the sensor 90% of the time. And again, even faster. And that one gave us 70%. Okay, we'll run that one again at the same speed and see what happens. And with that run, we read the sensor 80% of the time. Okay, now I'm gonna run it one last time, but this time, I'm gonna pick a much slower interval. So it doesn't really seem that the speed at which we read or the delay between the readings has much of an effect on whether we can get a reading or not. So why do we have this problem? Remember, this sensor requires microsecond programming in order for it to work. And you can see here, even on the Raspberry Pi under Raspbian, we don't get readings every single time. Well, let's head over to the Arduino platform and let's see what we can do there. Let's browse to our sketch, and we'll get that loaded up in the Arduino IDE. Let me get this resized so it's easier to see. Now I'm going to upload this to my Arduino. And now it's compiled and uploaded. Let's open the serial monitor so we can watch the output from the program. The way the code is written, it will start off with a long delay between readings. It will then slowly decrease that delay so that it's reading from the sensor faster and faster. It will do this until it gets errors. Once it gets errors, it will then increase the delay until the errors stop. It's kind of a self-tuning mechanism so that we can see how fast we can take readings from this sensor without any errors. You can see here, the sensor readings have stabilized at about 152 milliseconds. That's pretty fast. Just as a side note, if the application begins to get errors from the sensor again, it will reset itself and then retune. I've actually pulled the sensor out of the circuit here to get it to give errors, and now you can watch it retune. Remember, it's not the delay that matters. It's the platform's ability to do microsecond timing. It's obvious from watching this that the Arduino platform is very capable of microsecond timing and we're able to read this sensor again and again at a very fast rate without getting errors. And now we're back to taking readings every 152 milliseconds. Now we're going to switch over to the Windows 10 platform and see what happens there. Let's browse to the source code and open it up in Visual Studio. When I first tried this sensor in Windows 10, I used C Sharp and I could not get it to work at all. The Windows 10 IoT platform is not quite ready for microsecond timing, and with the overhead of C Sharp, it's just not going to work. I then found Microsoft Sample Online, written in C++, and I decided to make this into a library that I could call from C Sharp. Let's see if it works. There's two projects. One is the C++ library, and the other is the C Sharp universal application. Let me make sure that the universal application is set as the startup project. 
Next, I need to get this pointed at my Raspberry Pi. We're currently pointed at device. I'm going to set this to remote. We're going to put the IP address in for the Raspberry Pi. We'll set the security to none, and then we'll save that. Now we have our environment set up. Next, we'll build the application, and we'll get it deployed. We'll start the debugger, which will build the application, and then deploy it to the Raspberry Pi. This is going to take a couple minutes to complete. I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here, so that you don't have to wait. Okay, we're ready to go. Let's cut over to the Raspberry Pi screen so you can watch this application run. As soon as this starts up, it will begin to take readings from the sensor. You can see some stats across the top of the screen. The attempts indicate how many times the library was called. The average retries is the number of times the library itself attempted to get a reading from the sensor. The next two indicate how successful we are at getting readings from the sensor. The last one is the rate at which we can get readings from the sensor. It's either going to display the number of readings per second, or as it's showing right now, the number of seconds, on average, it's taken to get a reading. As you can see from watching the output, the application is still struggling to get readings from the sensor. As I stated previously, I was unable to get readings using C-sharp by itself, so this is a 100% improvement over that. However, the platform is still not quite ready for microsecond timing. While doing my research, I had come across some replies in the Microsoft forums indicating that they are working on this. Microsoft has stated that because Windows 10 IoT Core is not a real-time operating system, the support for this type of sensor would be difficult, but obviously not impossible. They also stated that they are trying to build some one-wire capability into the platform sometime in the future. Even though this library is still struggling a little bit to take readings from this sensor, it still can get them. And if you don't need readings every second or every half a second, then this library should be perfect for you. Hopefully over time, with some changes from Microsoft on the platform, and either myself or somebody else taking a look at this library, we can tweak it, make it a little better, and get less errors. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoyed the project. Thanks for watching.